Let it be finished. So last year I released a video talking about the conflict between Sarfang and Sylvanas and how with the release of Tides of Vengeance, Blizzard was clearly gearing up to have Sarfang restore honor to the Horde, and how I found that such a viscerally offensive story decision, especially considering which character they were laying on the slaughtering table to do it, that I decided I couldn't play World of Warcraft anymore. Well now that story is concluded, and I have feelings on the matter. First, and most importantly, one of the big changes Blizzard made to the questline I talked about in last year's video was that Blizzard added an entirely new path to make where you could choose not to help Saurfang and remain loyal to Sylvanas. This would put you on the path of a Horde loyalist, a path that they would be constantly trying to goad you away from by making remaining a loyalist optional. By the way, you don't have the option to switch back to a loyalist after choosing to betray Sylvanas. You're stuck there. Now, for the most part, being a loyalist would mean going along with whatever harebrained traitorous scheme the rest of the characters were cooking up, but like, all sneak and shit, or at least that's usually what Nathanos' plan ends up being. Frankly, 99% of your enjoyment of being a loyalist will ultimately come down to whether or not you like Sylvanas enough to tolerate Nathanos being omnipresent the way he is. Now, I actually don't mind Nathanos, but he is a contentious character because he's been Sylvanas' love interest since Classic, and one of the writers started to project on him this expansion in a way that can only be described as creepy. Either way, things don't get interesting until the last part of the war campaign, where the rebels are lined up outside Orgrimmar to siege the place and probably sticking their dicks in iron stars to prove their honor or something, while the loyalist is inside rallying the leaders, burning rebel propaganda, rallying the Horde citizens, and beating up Eitrig because Eitrig sucks. But now we're at a position where Blizzard has to pick a winner, and both characters have massive fan bases that comprise different variations of Horde ideals. Both Sylvanas and Saurfang presumably care deeply about the Horde, jury's out on Saurfang since his honor is so vapid and narcissistic, and embody different elements of the Horde and what they stand for. So outside of just military might, Blizzard has to finally decide who wins that ideological battle, which is going to be a very difficult and nuanced concept to go through, and the Horde is nothing! Or just pull shit out of your ass to avoid having to do that and writing like Rebecca Sugar just after legalization of marijuana. Actually, it's not fair of me to compare Blizzard's writing to Steven Universe. If this were Steven Universe, they would have blighted the Exodar and Anduin would make a speech about forgiveness until someone jeered at Talia, at which point he'd show no mercy. Then he'd fuck his dad and hit on a lesbian and tell us this is a metaphor for the trans experience. And Warcraft isn't at that point. Yet. Yeah, the whole thing about the Horde being nothing kind of just comes out of nowhere, partially due to the fact that we haven't actually seen Sylvanas doing much during the war campaign, but also because everything about Sylvanas has contradicted this. Yeah, Sylvanas cares nothing for the living, none of the Forsaken do, if we're being completely honest, but this whole thing about hope being a concept she despises to the point of serial arson is a new thing for Battle for Azeroth. Most of her characterization is relatively new for Battle for Azeroth. Sylvanas has always been a ruthless character with her own agenda, but she's never been as absolutely kill crazy as she is in BFA. Hell, she objected to Garrosh mana-bombing Theramore largely due to the inevitable reprisal from the Alliance that would be largely targeted at the Forsaken and the Blood Elves. Keywords being, and the Blood Elves, which she was concerned about, but Lorthamar, strangely, not for some reason. Hell, War Crimes gave her a ton of nuanced character development that all seemed to just vanish by the time Vol'jin made her war chief. Starting from before the storm into BFA, Sylvanas just became a kill crazy psychopath, and even her whole mantra of not mind-controlling undead seemed to just vanish as her goals became simply as much death as possible. This is a brazen rewrite of a character to siphon out all the nuance and turn her into another big bad. Presumably she's playing four-dimensional chess, but at this point it's clear that Blizzard's inability to handle Sylvanas or characters like her with any grace or dignity is going to hamstring that idea. You see, Blizzard has issues with women, especially when it comes to women who have traumatic experiences. Just after the war campaign, it's made clear that Taronda has become obsessed with vengeance for Teldrassil and isn't answering the Alliance's letters. Oh boy, I can't imagine how she she'll feel when she's informed the war is over and we have to be friends now. From Missa Pandaria onward, Jaina went from a Steven-esque pacifist to a bloodthirsty anti-Horde zealot after the Horde bombed Theramore and killed everybody there. A traumatic change that will last until Battle for Azeroth, where she was given a character arc of just forgive and all her troubles went away. Characters like this are all over Blizzard's games, like Widowmaker and Kerrigan, who have traumatic experiences and turn into blithering psychopaths as a result. And Sylvanas is ground zero for that kind of character, and they've always handled her in very mixed ways. Typically, she's just the hanger-on for the Horde until 
until it's time for the Horde to do something dumb, in which case she seems to always draw the short straw. Outside of that, she's always been the only competent leader the Horde has, and, well, Blizzard don't like that. BFA was a slow, methodical destruction of Sylvanas' character. To boil her down to a one-dimensional shell of her former self and villainize her just like Blizzard always does to women in positions of power. And the fact that the fanbase split over this decision proves that there is a limit to how much bullshit people will take in regards to Blizzard just throwing away beloved characters. The Burning Crusade turned Kael'thas, Lady Vash, and Illidan into villains just because it would be fun to be a raid boss, which they then had to backpedal when it came time to do a Burning Legion expansion. There were some people who liked Garrosh, and he actually had some interesting character development in Cataclysm, but nope, time to be a villain because the expansion needs a plot. And then comes BFA, and Blizzard set themselves up to do the same thing they've always done. The problem is that they didn't just pick any old fan-favorite character like Kael'thas, they picked THE fan favorite character. Sylvanas wasn't just any old popular legacy character, she remains one of the most beloved characters in the entire franchise due to her story, her complex character design, and various other reasons. The player base wasn't just going to accept the destruction of what would likely be their favorite character lying down, and this story decision remained the most controversial story decision in the history of the game, especially when it was being done for the express purpose of a meme character, sorry, three meme characters, being able to harp on and on about m honor as if it actually means anything. No, this is the Horde, led by you, someone who has honor. <sighs> I've never known honor. And what the fuck is the point of all this? I can't speak for anyone else, but my decision to remain a loyalist was born purely out of stubbornness. It was entirely a resistance to this story thread and a refusal to play along with it. I recognize the council has made a decision, but given that it's a stupid-ass decision, I've elected to ignore it. I can't say I agree with Sylvanas because her philosophy changed every single fucking day as Blizzard grew more and more desperate, but if there is one thing I can agree with, it's the one thing she probably wouldn't have said if she hadn't been written by three incels and a Sylvanduin shipper. The Horde is not Nothing. You see, Sourfang challenges Sylvanas to a duel and Sylvanas wipes the floor with him. All Sourfang can manage to do is get a nick on her face, which sends her into the obligatory you're all nothing speech, and then just vibe checks Sourfang to death and fucks off. Afterwards, there's a ton of dialogue about Banshee loyalists needing to be forgiven by everyone because Sylvanas tricked us all. And there's the problem. You see, Sylvanas was the designated villain of BFA, but she wasn't the only one. Most of the Horde leadership stood by and let everything happen, or worse, actively conspired to make it happen. The burning of Teldrassil, the big, oh look how far Sylvanas has gone moment, only happens because of everything Sourfang does. You know Sylvanas' whole thing about destroying hope? Yeah, that's Sourfang's idea. It was his idea to invade Darkshore, occupy Teldrassil, and kill the Night Elf leaders to inflict a wound that would never heal. That losing their city and their leaders would destroy the Night Elves as a nation, destroying their hope. This was all Saurfang's plan that he gave to Sylvanas. And worse even, it was his idea to use rogues to butcher the Night Elf people, military and civilian alike, to sow chaos and aid the Horde in battle. And when you read all of that, you'd at first think, oh, this is Sylvanas' plan. But no, it was Saurfang. And then Saurfang choked. The whole war was to destroy the Night Elf's hope, and the most important part of that being killing Malfurion. Saurfang refused to do it because it wasn't honorable. So far, this war had included raising the land, killing the spirits, tearing apart ancients, killing civilians in brutal and gruesome ways, and pretty much attacking as out of the blue as humanly possible, and with as much subterfuge as possible. And now it's suddenly not honorable? We can kill these civilians, but not those civilians, because they're like over there and shit. So obviously the plan is a failure because Sarfang couldn't do the most important yet hardest to fail part. Had he not been overcome with a random burst of m honor, the tree would still be standing because the mission would have been a success. And he knows this. That's why he tried to kill himself. Sylvanas has been a scapegoat the entire time. Sarfang died as he lived, denying his role in Teldrassil. Shit like this and his vapid narcissistic honor is what made him so difficult to actually sympathize with. Sarfang is the least likable, least sympathetic, most disgustingly written character in an expansion where one of the writers was projecting onto Nathanos. Get to the king. No. And for most of the Horde, this wasn't a problem. Bane had his moral event horizon moment because Derek Proudmoore was being psychologically conditioned. Lorthamar had this because Sylvanas was going to execute Bane for treason. None of them mentioned Teldrassil at all. And now the Horde is about to pull that just following orders crap just because it's easier for Blizzard to scapegoat the current Warchief than to deal with the implications of their own writing. As a result, the Horde leadership doesn't fucking stand for anything. Their acts of rebellion are random and show no consistency. Sarfang is okay with murdering civilians until he randomly decides he is 
isn't. Bane is okay with all of that, but not okay with mental subjugation of a single person. Lorthamar is okay with all of that, but not killing someone he knows. Thrall doesn't give a flying fuck about any of that, but he does care if the assassins come after him specifically. The Maghar don't care about any of that, but they do care that the Warchief called the Horde nothing. Except she's right. The Horde stands for nothing. The Horde believes nothing. The Horde will do or be whatever Blizzard needs it to be for their next expansion. And the next time Blizzard wants to stoke the fires of Alliance vs. Horde, the Horde will be all about conquest again, until players complain about being the bad guy, and then the next Warchief will be scapegoated, and the Horde will be all about honor again. The Horde will be whatever Blizzard decides it is this week. The Horde is nothing. So yeah, safe to say I still remain staunchly in favor of Sylvanas because the way the game scapegoats her for the consistent actions of the Horde and pretends that this is breaking the cycle is so fucking stupid and I do not want to play along with it. So at this point, I will stand the Banshee Queen until Blizzard retcons this whole fucking expansion and deflanderizes Sylvanas back into the ruthless but overall good aligned character she was supposed to be and get off this Horde is nothing bullshit. That's such a fucking cop out. I mean, it goes against everything about Sylvanas and was clearly only done as a last ditch effort to sway people, but Blizzard didn't get that we stand Sylvanas because we hated this kind of cop out bullshit. Like, Burning the tree doesn't bother me, Blizz, because nobody fucking likes the Night Elves. You want me to think we've gone too far? Killing a bunch of Nazis is not how you do that. This is fucking Steven Universe all over again. I mean, God.